There's already so much bitterness and there's, al- and there's already so much backstabbing going on between people af- associated with the Steelers offense, Bob. Yeah, I didn't expect it so soon. It's only two games. <laughs> I mean, do you disagree with me on that? No. For I, calling I, I each other out. If you listen to Pat Fryermuth, uh, he stopped short of going all in on that, but he made comments that made you think that way. We've heard others do the same thing, and this is not the time to do that sort of thing. But if you're not going to change, you're going to have unhappy campers in there, and they have to do something more. And I think, listen, Trubisky was brought here to handle some of this stuff. He's been around a long time, and if he can't handle – audibles at the line of scrimmage or anything else then what's the point i don't i don't see that we got a lot of calls Andrew. Bob, i think right they've it. i think they've neutered him i think that they've coached him in a way where he's scared now i thought that's bill not, cowers comments at halftime were spot on yeah i agree with you but that's not the way to do it that shouldn't be the way to do it after all why would you bring him here if that was the case number one cochran go one better call of the night let's begin with uh, bill and carnegie hey bill and by the way just a ding 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 update the yankees won that game will crow your boy, Will Crow, Andrew, <laughs> gave up the home run to Judge, and apparently a lot more than that. They took what? It was an 8-4 lead to the bottom of the ninth. Yep. And they lose. Yep, they got to Clay Holmes. Wow. Wow. Bill, go ahead, Bill. Hey, hey Bob, how you doing? Good. Hey, Andrew, I got a question for you. I think the still should start Kenny Pickett Thursday instead of Tavetsky because he ain't done nothing for the Steelers. Well, I'd have him in the bullpen warming up, Bob. You know, these postseason starts, when you get into baseball in October, a starter doesn't get a long leash because all the games are precious. And I think the Steelers need to look at this game in Cleveland that way. And then if Trubisky struggles, bring in Pickett, let him play. Uh, If you're behind, he gets to go no huddle, which he did very effectively in the preseason. And if he struggles a little bit, that's okay too because you can look at the tape on Friday and then you'll have more time to make corrections before you get him ready for the Jets at home the following week, which is a very winnable game, and I think a yeah. soft landing spot for a rookie quarterback to make his first start. There were two areas of this schedule that I thought, if you're going to make a change, there were two that were inviting to do that. That would be 10 days before a Jets home game and the bye week where you have time. But you're right. If this game gets out of control, they may do that, and they should probably do that to get a taste. Not unlike what we saw with Malik uh, Willis um, on Monday night. In that game, because Tennessee was... But I don't even think it needs to be that big of a blowout. Remember, Tomlin benched Mason Rudolph for Duck Hodges in Cincinnati Mm -hmm. because he thought his team needed a spark. So I could see the same thing happening with Pickett Thursday night, Bob. Yeah, the only thing is, it seems to me, everybody I've talked to seems to come to the conclusion that the Steelers really want, more than anything, Kenny Pickett to learn by watching in year one. And... If what is he learning? I don't that, know. That, that the team wants to handcuff <laughs> the starting quarterback and not trust but the him the plays? the point is, at some point, if it becomes you, you need to make a change, you need to make a change and make a change. He's the number one pick. He's, he's the most pro-ready. That was the report, and he has been. He's been five years in that pit system. He's ready. If you determine – I understand going into this why they wanted to – it's, it's not that easy to turn it off from preseason to the regular season. I get all that. But at some point, if you get desperate enough and your goal is to make the playoffs and you feel you need an injection of youth or something else. But the problem with that, Andrew, is if they keep the same play calling and the same kind of system they're using, I don't know if it makes it any better if he's in there, Mason Rudolph or anyone else for that matter. Well, I don't disagree with that. Uh, But I think eventually, if they continue to, if they continue to play this way, I feel like we're just wasting our time with Trubisky. You know, at least with Pickett, if they do play conservatively, you know, there's going to be things during those games that he can take and carry with him into the next game or next season. Uh, you know, that, that might be productive in the big picture or the long run. Having Trubisky just go out there and try to be a caretaker for an offense that scores, you know, one touchdown a game, I don't think that's helping or benefiting anyone, Bob. No, I don't. And especially him. It's not helping him at all. He needs to... You know, let his experience right. show a little bit. Let's go to Bill and Cranberry before we take a break. What's up, Bill? How are you tonight? Hi, Andrew. Hi, Bob. Hey, Bob, hey, you kind of touched on this. Um, there was a report out that Canada will not let uh, Trubisky do audibles at the line, and he only gave him 10 pages out of the 300-page playbook. Is this all true? I don't know how long their playbook is, but, yeah, there are restrictions in place, apparently. Uh, and again, he's a, he's a veteran. I, I don't know that you need to do that with a guy like that. He, if he's smart enough to know the playbook. Now, listen, his other problem in this, and we saw it on Sunday uh, a couple of times in key moments, is that he stares guys down. That interception was an was a exact example of that. When you saw Mac Jones look left, throw right, 
and, and give his opportunity for his wide receiver to make a play at the end of the first half. You know, what's, what's wrong with that? Why can't the Steelers do more of that? Just throw it up and say, Clay, hey, Claypool, you're 6'4". Hey, Pickens, you're 6'3". Go up and get it. Fryermuth, you're big enough. Jump, get it. I want to see that. Well, my, the, the, I think their issue with what you're saying there is, Bob, they feel like that was a bad decision by New England because that ball should have been intercepted. But it wasn't. Tomlin at no point tipped his cap and said, hey, Aguilar made a great play. In fact, he was very terse and very curt about Witherspoon. Seemed to want to bite his tongue about the way Witherspoon misplayed that ball. So I think they look at that play and say, that's why we don't take chances because a defensive back is supposed to make a turnover out of that play, not a touchdown. But if your receiver six four and he has a three inch or four inch height advantage and can jump, why wouldn't you want to make that play? I would. I. I I, I agree, Bob, but don't you think they would have done it by now if they believe I that? I, I hope so. I don't know. I hope we see it on Thursday night. This is a big game for them right off the bat here. Second one in the division. we got to take a break, Andrew. we got Steve, another Steve, and a Fred on the line. We'll try to get those calls mm -hmm. in next right here on Pittsburgh CW.